So a few months ago, my husband Matt and I were talking with some amazing friends of ours, Dave and Laura Lee Latham, when Dave brought up something that I found absolutely fascinating. See, Dave had served a mission in Japan, and while we were talking, he brought up something called Kintsugi. And today, I'm going to focus on the truths that we can learn from Kintsugi and how you can use this ancient Japanese art form to help you live your unique purpose. If you haven't heard of Kintsugi yet, you're going to love the beauty and the symbolism in it. Kintsugi is believed to have grown out of some other Japanese philosophies involving acceptance of human life and embracing the flawed or imperfect. It's where the marks and wear shown on an object are actually valued. This idea drove people to repair dishes instead of just discarding them when they had damage to them. Right? and they celebrated and kept these things as much as possible. Over time, Kintsugi was born. In Kintsugi, the artisan deliberately highlights the repairs by using gold to mend the cracks. The broken parts become illuminated, emphasized, and even celebrated because of the history and experience shown in this piece and how it is beautiful. It is the ultimate acceptance of human life. And then the dishes become even more highly valued because of these repairs. So truth number one I'm going to share with you today is that in this life, you will become worn down, dinged up, and even cracked and broken. Which leads me right to truth number two, and that is that this was always the plan. Modern artists still use this technique of kintsugi as a way of portraying themes of loss and synthesis and improvement through destruction and rebirth. Does any of this sound familiar to you? It might. On churchofjesuschrist.org it says, We believe that in our pre-mortal life we came together for a council where Heavenly Father explained His plan for us. He told us that because of this plan, we can become perfected through the atonement, receive a fullness of joy, and live forever in the presence of God. At this grand council, we also learned that all of us would have trials in our lives, sicknesses, disappointments, pain, sorrow, and death. And we understood that these were to be given to us for our experience and our good. If we allowed them to, these trials would purify us rather than defeat us. At this council, we also learned that because of our weaknesses, all of us except little children would sin. We learned that a savior would be provided for us so that we could overcome our sins and overcome death with resurrection. We learned that if we placed our faith in him, obeying his word and following his example, we would be exalted and become like our Heavenly Father. We would receive a fullness of joy. We came to earth to gain experience, and we learned that through that experience we would be worn and broken. But because of our Savior, we would become whole again. But not as we were before. Through this process, we would become something new, something expanded, something more like God. We will have progressed. We know this, and yet, when we experience disappointment or sorrow, trials or sin, we think something has gone wrong, that it shouldn't have happened. We think that in that pre-mortal planning meeting, what God was really saying was, you're going to go down to earth, and if you follow my gospel and you have enough faith, then things will be great. Nothing should ever go wrong. Remember, you should always be happy, and if you're not, then you're clearly off plan. Oh, and I will provide a savior, but you better not mess up and need to use the atonement. You really shouldn't sin. You should definitely know better than that. Now, get down to earth, do it perfectly, and that's how you'll become like me. But when I say it like that, it's obvious that that isn't the plan, but we really do think like that so often. Just like in Kintsugi, we can learn to better accept 
the dings and the cracks that will come as a part of our human existence. We can appreciate that those experiences are for our good and we can celebrate the person we are becoming not in spite of our struggles but because of them. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm advocating that you go out and get as many cracks as possible. See, historians say that Japanese collectors became so enamored with the new art of kintsugi that some were accused of deliberately smashing valuable pottery so it could be repaired with the gold seams. But progression is a process, not a one-time event, and the experience and history of these pieces wasn't the same when they did it that way. So I want to be clear that this isn't what I'm talking about. I'm not saying to go out and do the worst you can as quickly as you can or go pick up as many addictions as possible or something like that so that you can grow the most. You can trust God's curriculum. You don't have to write your own. God knows so much more about the experiences that you need to become who you are meant to be. So do the best that you can. But remember that your best was never meant to be always happy and always perfect. God has a different plan. It was a plan that we agreed to and we rejoiced in. Okay, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how all of this relates to your purpose in life. In her article for young adults, Marissa Dennis said, our wounds inform our experience and shape our journey. They teach us things that we can't learn in a classroom. Our moments of brokenness inspire us to turn to the Savior for healing, to humble ourselves, to rely completely on Him. They allow us bit by bit to become more like Him. Jesus Christ would not be the Savior if He had not endured His brokenness. And you would not be the glorious person that you are becoming if you were not required to endure your own. And she quoted the poet Robert Bly who said, where man's wound is, that is where his genius will be. And I love that because I work with people on finding their genius. So truth number three that I wanna share is, if you will let him, God will heal your broken pieces and create a masterpiece something even more expansive and better than it was before. There is so much value in your golden cracks. As you acquire them, not only are you becoming more like God, you are expanding in a way that allows you to offer more to the world. See, as we are sanctified, we become more loving, empathetic, and kind. We see others suffering and we want to serve them the way that the Savior would if he were here. But unfortunately, we can't help everyone. So often the people we are meant to help are the people that we really see and understand because they have a crack that still needs to be healed, much like a crack that we have healed in our own life. Our purpose is influenced by our golden cracks because we have such interest, passion, understanding, empathy, and compassion for others who are having similar experiences. When we use those feelings and look outward, then our experience becomes not only for our own good, but it is for the good of all those who are in similar situations, people that we can serve. So when I was researching for this video, I found a song by Callie Reed called Broken and Beautiful. And all three truths that I've talked about in this video are in this song. Number one, that in this life, you will be broken. Number two, that that was always how it was meant to be. And number three, if you let him, God will heal your broken pieces and create something beautiful. He will create a masterpiece. If you haven't heard this song yet, I highly recommend it. And when you are struggling, I hope that you will remember the art of Kintsugi. You are beautiful, exactly how you are, where you are in your process. You are God's masterpiece, and I celebrate you. You've totally got this.